of you know what that wistful tune means. It means it's time for Ask Coach Carol. Ask Coach Carol Phillips in the house here. At Hello, the everyone. Building. Nice to see you, Coach Carol. You too, Ken. How are you? You're looking very summerish today. Thank you. Yes, and I decided to put a summer dress on this morning since it's gorgeous out and that wind finally died down. Oh, yeah. Just a gorgeous day to be outside. I wish we were on our uh, rooftop studios right now. We'll have to set that up for it, next time. Yeah, if we had them. but <laughs> <laughs> We can create them that, that in could, no time. That could be arranged. It could be arranged somewhere. <laughs> One eight six six eight two three one zero seven seven is our number. Coach Carroll is here for the uh, next hour. We'll talk about a, a variety of things, including the uh, the senior games, the New Hampshire senior games, which are uh, upcoming. Which yes, is always uh, a great time of the year. But I know you wanted to mention something before we got onto that. I do. Um, I wanted to announce that the Arbors of Bedford is offering an event next Monday, June 20th, from 1 p.m. to 2 p.m. And this, they're doing this in conjunction with the Alzheimer's Association's um, long, The Longest Day event. And the Arbors is doing an event called A Walk in Their Shoes. It's a dementia simulation. So if you're not familiar with, with dementia and Alzheimer's, it basically helps people to get a first-hand view of what it feels like um, to actually have Alzheimer's as best as you can try to simulate it. But it really creates some good conversation and make people think about what the other person is going through when they're dealing with this challenging disease. So it's at the Arbors of Bedford, 70 Hawthorne Drive in Bedford, Monday, June 20th from 1 to 2 p.m., if you're interested, you can RSVP or call for more information to Angela Gardner or Paula Whittier at 603-647-9300. And, you know, if you have anybody in your family who's been diagnosed with Alzheimer's and you haven't done the simulation yet, go and visit. They're also a great resource for um, dementia information because Caregiving is a very difficult job, and it takes a village to take care of somebody with dementia or Alzheimer's. And so you want to get as many resources as you possibly can. And once again, um, for people who aren't aware, Alzheimer's is a form of dementia. So dementia is the umbrella term, um, but Alzheimer's is the, the highest percentage of the dementias. So once again, Monday, June 20th, from 1 to 2 o'clock. And if you need more information, you can call 647 Nine three zero zero. And again, that is where? It's at the Arbors in Bedford, 70 Hawthorne Drive. Outstanding. All right. Thank you, Carol, for that. And uh, now, uh, introduce our esteemed guest in studio. Yes, I am excited to introduce Jim Edinger, who is the chairman of the New Hampshire Senior Games. And, you know, we talk on this show on a regular basis about the importance of exercise and socializing. And so I think we're going to have some really super great information today available for people. So welcome, Jim. Thank you very much. Thank, Thank you. you for being here. Appreciate so can you tell us a little bit about you and how you got involved with the New Hampshire Senior Games and then give us give us an overview of them? Well, I've been involved with it for the past 10 years, uh, the last three years as chairman of the organization. Um, I got myself started in it uh, by having one of the previous chairmen uh, just asking me if I would like to be involved and come to the games and, and participate as an athlete. And then I did uh, look to see that they uh, were looking for volunteers on the board. And uh, so uh, I got myself roped into it. <laughs> uh, I did it myself, mm -hmm. <laughs> and I've been on it uh, ever since, and it's uh, been a wonderful organization that uh, uh, does a lot to uh, a lot for the seniors uh, here in New Hampshire, but we also spread ourselves out to uh, out-of-staters also. So we're an open state, so probably about 40% 40, 40 of our athletes come from out-of-state, and uh, mostly New England, but we do have some that travel uh, from uh, great distances, and they plan their vacations about, about going to different states. Every state in the union has a, a state organization for, the, like ours, the Grand State Senior Games. And we put on the sports, 18 different sports, uh, one team sport, basketball, and 17 individual sports for those individuals who want to participate. Uh, we, we are open to 
uh, people come in and sometimes they have no idea about the sport that they're participating in, but they're there to try it and we help them out wow. and try it. Right. Great. That, Boy, that, people must great. love it if they're uh, planning their vacations around it. Yeah, oh, well, absolutely. They do. Uh, yeah. They do. Uh, they, we get calls early in the year in January and February wanting to know when our games are going to be so that they can participate participate and uh, use it for vacations to come up to this part of the country. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, so where we, do they take place? Well, we have them uh, all over the, pretty much all over the area, um, mostly in the Manchester area. But we are in Concord, we are in Bow, we are in Goffstown, we are in Nashua, we are in Salem, Plastow. We, wherever we can get a venue that supports and uh, has a facility that uh, can handle our uh, particular event that we're looking at doing, uh, we go there. Yeah. Great. Now, how long has this been going on? I know you, you've been involved for 10 years, but how long has this, it been going on? Ken, this will be our 29th year. Wow. Yeah, 29 years. Uh, we started up in Concord uh, in 80, 87, 88, I believe it was. We incorporated in 87, but 88 was our first year. And um, it, we were winter sports up there. Uh, and then, uh, I'm sorry, not in Concord, in Laconia. I had winter sports, and then we moved down to Concord and did winter and summer sports, and then the winter sports kind of fell by the wayside, and uh, we continued with the summer sports and then moved to Manchester probably about 15, 16 years ago, and we've been here ever since. Great. Yeah. It's, it's a, uh, uh, the, some states do have winter sports as well as the summer sports. Uh, we have enough to handle just our summer sports with the the, the 18 sports that we do have. And we're going to have probably about 600 athletes this year registering for our games. That's a wonderful variety it is, of it sports. Is. So can you give us a quick list of some of them? Well, yes, we have archery, uh, we have uh, pickleball. And no, no, yeah, tell you, us, you have to stop yeah, there. Yeah, yeah. You have to stop. <laughs> stop. What is pickleball? Pickleball is a sport that's been around <laughs> for over 40 years. And uh, it's uh, been up here in New Hampshire for a long time, but pretty much in 2010 is really when it started to take off up here. We have local courts here in town over at Rock Rimmon on the west side, and we have eight, uh, six courts over there that, where we play every single morning and pretty much almost every single afternoon and evening. We have a group of people. But pickleball is a sport that's almost like tennis, badminton, and uh, table tennis. And the only difference between the pickleball and tennis is that when you serve, you serve underhand. It's played with a paddle, not a tennis racket, okay. and it's played with a like a wiffle ball, a plastic wiffle ball. So the ball is not as bouncy as a tennis ball, but it's it has a net, and it has a paddle, and it has a ball, just like the three that I mentioned. And uh, we play mostly with uh, partners, but uh, uh, you can play a singles game and get a good workout. And oh, but, yeah. it's very, very popular in the warmer climates. Uh, you go down to Florida, to the villages down there, and they have over 100 courts down there where they play uh, pickleball from morning to through the night. Now, wow. what kind of a paddle do you use? It's a wooden paddle. It's an expanded paddle <laughs> like a uh, table tennis paddle. But bigger, though, but right? Much larger, yeah, yeah, yes, but yeah. not as large as a tennis racket. Right. All right? right. So, And we have a lot of uh, former tennis players yeah. and uh, racquetball players to come in and participate and play. Could we get an extra large one so I could actually hit the ball? Uh, you will have no problem doing it. It is, it is wonderful. It's a wonderful sport, and it's a, a, it's a very big social sport. A lot of people can't wait to uh, uh, come and play and meet people and meet friends and play as a partner. We, it, we are open to anybody to come with all kinds of levels, from the beginner all the way to a level where they are very, very, very good pickleball players. And uh, we have groups that come in in the afternoon that are been around for a while who are strong players. And then we have those that come in the morning who are pretty much new players or they're just for the recreation and have some fun. Mm-hmm. But it's, 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 a, it's a sport that you don't get injured too much with it, but you could <laughs> if you, if you uh, stumble along the way. Right. But we have a great time. A little safer pickle. than football. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's right. Now, you play, it, you play it on a tennis court? We play it on uh, a tennis yeah. court. Okay. We took over the tennis courts that were over there. Okay. Uh, they'd been there for two years, weren't being used, so I went to the parks department mm-hmm. and asked them if, uh, if we could take them and use them, and they said, sure, go ahead. And uh, so we took two tennis courts, and we made six pickleball courts out of it. 
Wow. Yeah, that's it's, terrific. And that's that's pretty much happening in a lot of a lot of communities where the tennis courts are not being used. But then there are some communities that will have a tennis court and they will put the lines down for pickleball. So they're playing both on that same court. Oh, terrific. Very nice. So to go on with the rest of them, uh, we have bowling, we have the table tennis, we have the shuffleboard, we have racquetball, and uh, we have swimming. We have precision pistol, too, uh, 22 caliber. And we play that up in, uh, in uh, Dunbarton mm-hmm. at the uh, uh, club up there. Oh, I want to do that. I want to try that. <laughs> <laughs> you want to shoot? You want to shoot the but, pistol? I do. But yeah. but you gotta have, I would pay to see that. You got to bring your huh? own, and you got to be experienced in using it. Oh, you have it's, to bring your own. Yes, okay. Right. Okay. Right. Actually, I'm a pretty good shot. Are you? I am very accurate. Yeah. Yes. Oh, so, very good. But I don't own my own. Uh, very good. <laughs> uh, swimming, cycling, badminton, horseshoes. Uh, the basketball is a is a basketball is three on three half court. And we play two 15-minute periods. Yeah. And uh, this year we're going to introduce a shot clock. Oh, but, really? Yeah. Yeah. It's the first time we're going to have well, that. They've been trying to slow it down a little bit? Uh, yeah. Well, no. The, 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 of course, you know, with the shot clock, without the shot clock, they're going to stall the game. Yeah. yeah. So we got to get them to move the game along, especially if there's a close game. <laughs> but it's only 15-minute periods, and the, the guys the guys like it, and the gals like it, too. Sure. Uh, both the men and women have uh, uh, basketball games. Uh, we also have the track and field with all the events there, the throwing events, the track events. And uh, we have a race walk. We have a tennis. And we have table tennis. We have golf. And we have a road race. Wow. wow. How long is the road race? Road race is a 5K. 5K. All and right. And we participate with the uh, uh, St. Charles uh, Children's Home that's over in Rochester. They have one on Labor Day at uh, at the uh, – um, in – in uh, Portsmouth. Okay. And uh, so uh, we participate with them on that. And uh, But most of the all the other events, we're on our own with uh, and running up ourselves. That's a great variety. Oh, it is. It, it, it comes up. And a lot of these events that we have that I just mentioned are not sanctioned by the national games, like the, the pistol shoot is not one. Uh, candle pin bowling is not one, but we do have 10 pin bowling. So candle pin bowling is really pretty much all around New England, right? So we brought that in. That's good. For a lot of people. Um, that's a good enjoy right. that. You yeah. go in other areas of the country, and they say, "What's candle pin right. bowling?" There, yeah, there are very, very few states that really have candle pin bowling. That's right. It's mostly all in New England. Yeah, that they yeah. know of it. Yeah. And uh, so then uh, the other the other events uh, that I mentioned are pretty much all sanctioned by the national games. And every other year we have a, a national games event. And uh, in 2017 we'll have it in. Uh, uh, Baton Rouge, and I'm sorry, uh, in uh, Birmingham, Alabama. Uh, this year is a qualifying year for those people to qualify to go there next year. Oh, really? Okay. So we have a qualifying year every other year. So this year we're going to have a lot of people in, athletes in, to register and to qualify for the games. Oh, for Birmingham, okay. Yeah. Next year will be non-qualifying year, so our numbers won't be as high. Mm-hmm. But But every other year is a qualifying year. And they don't do it every year. It's just too, too big an event to put on every other year. Mm-hmm. So it's just like an Olympics. They put it on every four years or so. Yeah. We do it every other year. So and can you walk us through um, how people get involved, the fees, registration, sure. and qualifying? Yep. Um, the, the registration process is an online registration. And uh, we, have a, we have a company that handles our registration. And uh, it's a very simple process to go in. Once you register uh, for the games, uh, the next year you come in, your name is, your information is all there, and uh, it just uh, populates up so that you don't have to fill it in again. Love that. Unless you want to change, and then you just go to the events and, and, and check off the events that you want to play. Some of the events are uh, uh, $45 for our games. But well, we have seven events this year that we lowered the ages. Ed, lowered the ages. We lowered the uh, fees down to uh, twenty-five dollars because we have really no expense in putting those on. Uh, golf is a separate event that we charge forty-eight dollars for that, and that's going to be held at Beaver Meadows up in Concord, the golf course up there. Um, the uh, team sport basketball is one hundred and fifty dollars. Uh, and that is a big expense 
for to, to get the gymnasium, the venue, to put this on, and all the expense that goes with it. Mm-hmm. Uh, so they have three or four or five players, so they split that cost. And some of the basketball teams have their own uh, sponsors, too. Some companies uh-huh. will sponsor them to participate in the games. Um, the, uh, the other events, the seven events that I mentioned that are uh, bowling, uh, shuffleboard, uh, racquetball, uh, precision pistol, uh, horseshoes, they're the ones that are $25 uh, because we really have no big expense in that at all. Mm-hmm. And at the end of each event on the games, uh, they, they, they not only qualify for the national games, but they also receive from us a, a medal, gold, silver, or bronze medal, just like they do in the Olympics. Now, some of our states, other states, still call themselves the Senior Olympics. And we used to do that years ago, but we got away from it. We called ourselves the Granite State Senior Games. But now we are calling ourselves New Hampshire Masters Games. Okay. Just a moment ago, I made a slip of the tongue and said ages. But what we do now is we have a 40 to 44 age group, and we have a 45 to 49. Then we have a 50 to 54 in five-year age groups all the way up to 85. Uh-oh. The 50-plus age groups are the ones that qualify for nationals. The, the lower age groups we brought in the last couple of years only to get them introdu- introduced to sure. yeah. the senior game. So when they do reach that age of 50, they'll know about the games and they can just jump in yeah. and participate. So it pays to be older. It's a it good does. thing to be yeah. over 50. <laughs> you know, if you're under 50, forget it. You just How can't you qualify. Know? How would you know? <laughs> oh. <laughs> So I wouldn't. I wouldn't be in one of those lower categories. Let's just say that. Oh my goodness! <laughs> <laughs> but it's it's a fun, a fun games for everybody, and uh, we we do have an, in a recognition dinner too, an athletes recognition dinner, uh, also every year too. That they uh, uh, we probably have about thirty or thirty five athletes that to participate. This year we may have more because it's a larger group that's participating in the games. And we, get in there and we recognize some of the athletes that have been around, some of the volunteers that helped us out. And a lot of these people who run these events are all doing it as volunteers. So the person who runs the archery event up in, uh, in uh, Dunbarton, uh, he's been doing it for a number of years, and he does it because he just loves doing it. Mm-hmm. But he is also uh, in the business of teaching archery. Uh, right, and yeah, then, that's great. And then the track and field, we have a coach from West High School who is the track and field coach. Over there, he runs our track and field event, uh, Lee Hess. Mm-hmm. And uh, he's been around for a number of years over there doing that with, with the students at West High School. He's been doing it for us. We do that at Memorial High School, uh, and uh, it, it, it's a one-day event, and we have a great time down there playing. And we have probably in that, we probably had end up with 120, 25 athletes our pickleball is going to be another big event. We'll, we have to cap that off at 120, and that's a three-day event that we have down in Plasto. You know, and and uh, we have singles, doubles, and mixed doubles in that. Mm-hmm. It's, it's uh, the, the different venues. Uh, table tennis is going to be at the Boys Club. They have it there on a Sunday night. Uh, and that's probably going to draw in about 40 athletes. And they come from, a lot of them come from the Massachusetts area that they come and play table tennis. Mm-hmm. The same thing with badminton. Badminton's going to be over in, at, um, uh, in uh, what's the name of the college, over in the, uh, oh, my goodness, I forgot the name of the college. Uh, badminton, badminton, Kobe Sawyer College. Oh, okay. okay. New, New London, London. yeah. Okay. We moved yep. it there this year. Okay. Uh, you know so, what's great is all these places that are partnering with you. Yes. And that's so. what I love to see out in the yeah, community is exactly, more and more yeah. partnering for people's overall health and wellness. And yep. a few minutes ago, you used a word that I love, and that is fun. Yep. So, you know, we talk often on the show about how, you know, fun needs to be a huge component of health and wellness. So I love the fact that the senior games are not only getting people excited about exercising, but making it fun. And then people are socializing more. So, you know, we had talked earlier about, you know, getting vets involved, Mm -hmm. which is, you know, such a great idea because exercise and socializing, you know, it's funny, you know, when 
people turn 100, you know, the news crews show up at your house, right, yep. to do yep. your interview with you and your birthday cake. Yeah. So, you know, you're, get, you're up there when the news shows up for your birthday party. <laughs> and they always ask them, you know, what's your secret to longevity? And it's always, you know, sense of humor, socializing, staying active. So, yep. you know, you're just supporting that so well. Yes. Uh, part of our mission is, is for fitness, friendship, and fun. That's what we Perfect. Really, we do it for. And uh, what we have uh, done in the past, uh, uh, I mentioned about the age groups. Well, we have some over 80, some over 90. And two years ago, I had someone in the pool out in, in Gosstown, Y. She was 99 years old. Wow. And she, uh, she came up from Massachusetts. Huh. And the reason she came up here to participate is because she had broken her wrist. And so she missed the games in Massachusetts. So she came up. We had to put her in the water with the lift and take her out because she had not the strength to pull right. up on the ladder. Mm -hmm. right. But she did backstroke. She did a 200, 100, 200, and 400 backstroke. Wow. Right? She qualified <laughs> and went out to nationals. And that year it was in Cleveland. No, I'm sorry, Minneapolis. And uh, she went out there as a 100-year-old. That year there were 300, 100-year-old people. Uh, two men and one woman. Wow! Participating. How inspirational! Well, yeah. That is terrific. Yeah, that, that and is... it's amazing to see these people that get out there and play. I did. I do track and field, so I get out there <clears throat> a couple of years ago, and I was on the track, and and we because we didn't have enough in the different age groups, they lined us up with many different ages. So when I qualified, or anybody else, I qualified my age group, but I may have only three people that raced and competed with me. Well, I saw this gentleman walking over, and he could hardly walk over to the starting line. And I said, oh, my goodness, this, this guy is be interested to see what he does. <laughs> the gun went off, and he took off like a rabbit. <laughs> he faked you out. Oh, <laughs> I did everything I could to catch up to pass him. And he was, I think he was in his 90s when he did that. Wow. Yeah, and it yeah. was great. So it, it is a great inspiration to see some of these people out there playing. Yeah. Well, they had, um, it was about a month ago on the news, they covered this woman. I can't remember where it was from. She was, I don't remember, upper 90s, 98 years old or something. And she was on the track and she ended up breaking a record for her age group. <laughs> However many people yeah. are in her age group. But what was really interesting was... When she got to the finish line, they, the announcer said that that's her daughter greeting her and giving her a hug at the finish line. Well, the woman looked like she was about 35. And I'm thinking, there's some good genes in that family because if she's 98 and that's her daughter, you know, yep. the daughter's probably, what, in her 70s? Yeah, Possibly. you'd have yeah. to think. Yeah. So, Very much so. Uh, oh, yeah. yeah, it's amazing. It's it amazing. Is. Yeah, it is. Uh we have a, a, an athlete over in Vermont, the woman, she's in her, she's over 80. I think she's over 85. And she competes, um, she has competed in our games in the past, but she does the Masters games. And so she goes, she goes to Europe to participate in some of these games. Now, what's the difference between the New Hampshire Senior Games and the Masters? Well, we changed our name last year to New Hampshire Masters Games because we wanted to bring in the 40, the 40, 40 above the 49 age group. Oh, okay. So that's why we get them in there instead of calling it the Senior Games. So our organization is called the Granite State Senior Games, but our games themselves are labeled as New Hampshire Masters Games. Oh, okay. That's what we call them. So that we get, now we're going below, and it's just not seniors, the 50 plus. It's the ages below that. Uh, some states, another state is also participating, and they go down to 30 on theirs. And, but you can then get someone who is a master in a particular sport and participate. And they will start at 30, probably 25, to participate in a particular sport. And they become a master at that sport. These people are also masters at their sport, but uh, we, we generate or we call them uh, still the senior games, but also now New Hampshire Masters games. So to bring them in also. Mm -hmm. So it, so it gets a lower age group in with our our games. Great. So it makes them available so that when they do qualify or get to the age 50, they know all about our games so they can qualify. So those under 50 cannot qualify for national games, only those that are 50 plus. Mm -hmm. And they have to be 50 by the end of the year, not the day that we are actually participating in the games. 
Our games are held in the month of August, so they start July 25th this year to September 5th. But most of them are all on the weekends mm -hmm. in the month of August. So it's not their birthday. It could be, <clears throat> they could be uh, 49, but as of the end of the year, they will be 50. So mm -hmm. they are considered 50 when they participate in August, and their birthday may be in November or December. Mm -hmm. So, so if, you're, if you're 50 by the end of the year, that's the, year, that's the age that you start to play in. And then you okay. are also playing in five-year age groups. So you compete in five-year age groups. Okay. Yep. Great. 3.36 is the time. Welcome back to our Ask Coach Carroll segment of Kale and Company. Talking about the New Hampshire Masters Games, the uh, Granite State Senior Games, if you will. That's, that's the corporate. And then... Uh, I guess, uh, how long has it been the New Hampshire uh, Masters Games, uh, Jim? This is our second year. Second, second year, okay. Yeah. All right. right, second year. And, uh, wow, it, it's, a, it's a, a great event. I've, I've never taken part in it, but I think, I think I may just give it a shot. Yeah. Really. Let's go check it out sometime, We, we should. We should. We, we should actually do that. I, I want to see you run the 50-yard dash. There you go. That's, <laughs> I not, will. not that I'm going to run it, but I'd like oh, to see yeah, you. Oh, yeah, you are. <laughs> yeah, we're going to bet a drink on it. Oh, okay. <laughs> we'll I, I don't think we'd be running against each other, though. <laughs> We could check our times, though, right? Yes, you yeah. can. Yeah. <laughs> Very much so. So, um, Jim, tell us um, about how you guys are funded and volunteers. Do, are you looking for volunteers for this year? Well, we, naturally, we're all looking for volunteers. Our, our organization is, and our board is, are made up of volunteers. Uh, we have 15 board members right now. And... Uh, and that's nice. I like that a little. That's very melodic. <laughs> and uh, what happens is that uh, our board uh, meets on a monthly basis uh, on the uh, fourth Tuesday of the month. And uh, probably about uh, one and a half, two hours of time. But the volunteers there uh, come from a variety of uh, the community. Uh, different. Uh, most, of them are, uh, most of them are retired, but we do have some that are still employed. And uh, we also look for volunteers at all the events, too. Uh, and some of the companies in, that have been very, very helpful with us, uh, one of our big sponsors is uh, uh, Anthem Blue. And uh, they also are a uh, financial sponsor, but they also supply us with a lot of volunteers for the different uh -huh. events. Uh, our board gets out there and helps out quite a bit. And we do have, uh, uh, like for track and field, we do get a lot of students that are, are – are, um, uh, on the track and field team, uh, come over and help us out because we do need them to help out on bringing the uh, uh, equipment out from the uh, uh, and chase down the javelin and the discus and all those <laughs> things mm -hmm. because someone has to retrieve them and bring them back. Uh, but our board is uh, is made up of 15 board members right now, but we can get more board members up to 21 as our bylaws allow us to do. Our funding comes primarily from the registrations. Uh, we do get some from uh, 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 the Anthem Blue. Uh, another major sponsor is, Hanif uh, is uh, Humana. They are a national sponsor of the senior games. Um, then also uh, we get some small sponsorships from different companies around. Uh, but most of the time, uh, most of the money that comes in is coming from the uh, registration fees. Now, as I ted said earlier, we lowered some of our fees uh, because of the uh, uh, venues do not charge us. And uh, that's the first year we, we've done that, just to attract more people to come in to play the games. Uh, we, know, we recognize that most of the seniors are on fixed income, and uh, some of them are okay with playing, pay, participating in the events and paying the fees, but there are a lot that uh, uh, struggle to get involved with the games because of the fees. So we did decide to lower them this year to help out as much as we could. Now, the more money we get in from donations, from sponsors, then we could take a look and say, all right, and this, uh, this company could maybe run our uh, golf event, or they could run the track and field event, and those are the fees that are high fees, and that would cut, we could cut down the cost on those things. So, but most of the money, most of our budget is run, uh, income has come from registration, and we run on just under $50,000 a year for our budget. 
And the majority of that money comes in is from registrations. Mm -hmm. I asked you this during the break, so I'm going to ask you again. Um, How do listeners get involved? Is it easy for people to get involved who don't exercise much, who aren't in shape? Yes, there are. Uh, I mean, they, they can go over and bowl if they want to. They can go to shuffleboard if they so choose. Um, and even a track event, uh, if they come over and they can run, if they haven't run for a long time, they know that they can run uh, uh, 50 yards, 100 yards, 200 yards. They want to do that. They can come in and try to do that. Some of the other events that are uh, field events, uh, such as um, uh, the, f- the throwing events, mm-hmm. uh, sometimes they bring their own instrument, in- instrument to participate in. Uh, they may bring the javelin, they may bring the discus, but we also have those uh, those uh, implements mm-hmm. available for them to do. Mm-hmm. Um, but uh, we, we want to make sure that they have done something with that so they don't hurt themselves while they right, participate. Right, right. But it's a good place for people to start, and then they can work up. Oh, definitely. You definitely, know, because definitely. there's so many health benefits to exercise, you yes, know. Yes, exactly. You know, it's, and we mentioned the vets. That's and, right. And, you know, there's a problem in this country with, with vets and with depression and suicide and, you know, feeling out of the loop when they come back home. And so this is a great way for people to, you know, exercise is one of the best ways to reduce depression, um, reduce um, high blood pressure, you know, get back into a healthy weight range. The list goes on and on and on. And exercise really is... Um, it is kind of a magic pill, yeah. so to speak. Oh, definitely. Uh, and uh, we have talked about this at our, at our meetings, too, about uh, because nationally the, uh, there's a number of states that are participating with wheelchair uh, athletes, too. Uh, and most of them are vets. Um, and, uh, but the, there are three sports that bowling, shuffleboard, and uh, uh, pickleball is also coming in. And they also do uh, basketball, and I've seen them playing tennis in wheelchairs, too, mm-hmm. at the Y in Goffstown. There's a Saturday afternoon, there's a group come in, and they, they participate and play tennis in a wheelchair. Mm-hmm. You know, it's amazing to see what they can do. And uh, we have to get ourselves more involved with, uh, with the vets, and especially those that may be uh, 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 using a wheelchair to get around. Because there's no reason why they can't get out there and do that. Right. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Very much so. Um, the uh, I don't know of too many states that are using uh, with wheelchairs, but they did have them at the national games uh, the past couple of years. And they had some people in there playing in the different sports. So mm-hmm. we as a state is going to have to get around and doing that also too, to get more people to go. Now, <clears throat> someone goes to the national games, they qualify – it's a big expense to go there because it's an expense on their own, mm-hmm. and uh, they they have to go there. We we find that that's one of the reasons we have it every other year because most people couldn't afford it to go uh, every year, and a lot of them do look forward to going to the national games because sure. they yeah. see people there that they haven't seen for the two years ago, right? And they're looking forward to going there and participate. Right, and it's more special if it's every other year. Oh, yes. <laughs> Especially when they're is. seeing people they haven't seen in a while. Oh, definitely. And that's the same thing with us at the state games. Even even at the state level, they come back once every year. And sometimes people come by, and I've seen people call me on a Saturday and say, I, can I come in and register on uh, the day of the event for track and field? I said, sure. And uh, so they're saying, well, I'm driving through. I'm on my way to Maine. They're coming from Vermont. So I come through and stop in Manchester, throw the javelin, <laughs> get their medal, and get in their car and head back up the main where they're there you, go. For, you know, and they just do that for the fun of it. Yeah, you know? yeah. And they just want to, just, just want to compete. Just want to compete. Mm-hmm. Yeah, right. very much. You so. do the shot put as well. Shot put. Yeah. Uh, javelin, and we do a uh, weight throw now. Ah. We right. don't do a hammer throw. And there's not many places in New Hampshire that you can actually do a hammer throw because it's too dangerous. There's not a field that uh, really has the netting up there for a hammer throw. Mm, yeah. and I think you'd have to probably go to Dartmouth College or something like that for that. But uh, we do a weight throw, which is not as dangerous as a hammer throw. And uh, that started a couple of years ago. So we try to get new sports in. We try to get new events into a sport. Um, and then we try to bring in sports that may not be a national sport, but it's something that uh, bocce is a sport that's around in many states. Mm-hmm. It's not a national sport, you know. Disc golf 
is another one. Right. Yeah, all right. Yeah. And that's around now quite a bit, but it's not a national sport yet. All right. And uh, I tried to get fencing in uh, back. And there is there are some fencing clubs here in New Hampshire, right here in Manchester. Sure. Yeah. You know, and yeah. to try to get them involved in it. But you got you got the the, the competition. Is the age group of those is down below the uh, 40 age group. There mm-hmm. are some that are older, but most of them are in the uh, college or high school that are using the fencing. And that's a popular sport. Why mm-hmm. is it so popular? Well, they're watching the TV, watching the movies, where there's a lot of sword fighting right, going on. Right. And that's what they get involved <laughs> There you mm-hmm. go. <laughs> well, it's good that you're always evolving and mm-hmm. open to, you know, new sports. and Anything that anybody has, to give it, we can give it a try. Mm-hmm. I mean, there are some states that will have, have cribbage tournaments in their games. And there are people that just won't get out and go out and play, but they do have some events that they like to participate in, and it helps them with their mind, too. Right, Because, Absolutely. you know, with cribbage, you're, you're adding up, you're using your mind. That's things. They may not be able to do something physically, but at least mentally yeah. they can get themselves challenged. Right, the brain needs there. exercise every very day, too. So. Yep, very much so. On the home stretch with Ask Coach Carol here on 1077 The Pulse on a beautiful, beautiful Thursday afternoon. Mostly sunny. Highs in the 80s today. Tomorrow, a mix of sun and, sun and clouds. Highs around 80. Saturday and Sunday, sunny. Carol? So I just wanted to remind everybody, if you're interested in going to the Arbors event on Monday, the Arbors of Bedford, um, it's called A Walk in Their Shoes. It's a dementia simulation. Monday, June 20th from 1 p.m. to 2 p.m. If you'd like to RSVP or get more information, you can call Angela or Paula at 647-9300. Um, also, if anybody wants to read my latest blog post, go to AskCoachCarol.com. You can check out my latest blog post, which focuses on taking that summer vacation, which is really important, or you can listen to some of the podcasts. Um, so, Jim, before... Um, we run out of time today. Can you please give us your website and let people yes. know how they can get in touch with you? If you're interested in looking at our website, it's uh, nhmastersgames.org. Okay, New Hampshire mastersgames.org, masters. plural, mastersandgames.org. Very good. Very good. And then you can go there and uh, click on up in the right-hand corner for registration if you choose to register. But you can go in and look at all the information on there about our games and see some of the pitches that we have there, too. Do some people register for more than uh, one event? Oh, yes. Yeah. 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 Uh, the majority of them are just in one event, but we do have some that participate in six, uh, five to six sports. Wow. Yeah. yeah. They do. As long as they don't conflict, because they got to get to the different uh, sure. games on that particular weekend. Uh, track and field is one that a lot of people like to sign up on different events on that day. But some of them are going to be running at the same time, so they may not be able to get to them. So we try to discourage them from, or if, at least at least let them know that if you're going to want to participate in different events, then make sure that you are able to get to that event. Otherwise, you're going to be scratched. Mm-hmm. Yep. And well, the, the first event is when? Sorry, Carol. That's okay. Yeah. Uh, the July, uh, July 31st. And archery, right? Archery, yeah, correct. Archery in Dunbarton. That's at Pioneer Sportsman Club in Dunbarton. And the last one is September 5th. It's a road race. At Pease uh, Tradesport in Portsmouth. So I would imagine the schedule is up on the website, right? It certainly is. Yeah. Yep, very much so. And then if anybody wants to look at the individual sports, there's some information about the individual sports, too. Uh, there's, there's, a, there's a link up there, just sports. Click on that, and it'll, it'll bring up all the sports. Including pickleball. Pickleball. Wow. Pickleball. Well, thank you, Jim. You've been a great guest today, great thank information. And just a great opportunity for people to get out there and socialize and exercise. Very thank you. So. Thank you very much for having us. Jim, it is uh, our pleasure. Coach Carroll, thank you very much. Thank you, Ken. Great to see you, as always. Looking very summerish.